Look, I'm not trying to blow smoke up your butt. I just think that you're... You're wonderful. Tonight, I would like to share with you what I believe to be one of the strangest and most misguided pieces of gaming promotional material I've seen in years, probably. Uh, it needs some setup, though. There's an event coming on April 14th called the Multiverses NHL Face-Off. It's going to be a live simulcast of an NHL game, but on top of that will be a 3D virtual representation of that game happening in the world of multiverses. Now, it sounds like a bad idea, right? It should be stated there's a lot of corporate synergy happening here. TNT and True TV, which is where it'll be broadcast, and it Max, the streaming service, and multiverses, and all of the characters within multiverses are all owned by Warner Brothers Discovery. So it's possible that everyone at H&L knows it's a bad idea, and everyone at Multiverses knows it's a bad idea, but they have to do this anyway. Like it or not, the slobbery and short-fused Looney Tunes character Tasmanian Devil will officiate the game and drop the puck on the afternoon's action. And yeah, this might sound like a worse version of something that happened last year when the NFL collaborated with Toy Story for essentially the same thing. They did use Slinky Dog as the first down chains, and I think that's I think that's clever. But who even needed the multiverse's NHL face-off? The NHL is less popular and somehow even less cool than the NFL. Did they need kids that bad? Kids already love the NHL for all the funny violence they do. Or is it multiverses who needs the attention right now? Because they've got their May 28th launch coming up. And here I want to get everybody on the same page. You might be thinking, wait, hold on, Multiverses is old. In 2022, they won Best Fighting Game at the Game Awards. Kyle, what do you mean launch? What are you talking about? That game had two seasons. They added six characters. They had battle passes and, and costumes you could buy. That's all correct. Th the game launched and had a time where it was successful, and then a sudden announcement that everything that people had been playing for the last 11 months was, in fact, just an open beta. As part of this process, we'll be pausing updates and taking the game offline as we prepare for the launch of Multiverses, which we're targeting for early 2024. And that's what's kind of unique about Multiverses, in particular, in this gaming era. This idea of a game that could launch and be very successful, and then languish, and then disappear entirely for a year, and then come back and launch as if everything is cool now. Last month, they just showed up with this video that was kicked off by the slobbery and short-fused Rick from Rick and Morty. Is there coffee? Settle, please? Well, what are we waiting for? Let's get to work. Get ready to roll. Get centered. Shoot. And the good news, everyone, is that Multiverses is coming back May 28th. They rebuilt the game entirely to improve the netcode, and they switched to Unreal Engine 5, so it looks better now. There have been no updates since that video, but there were Happy Meal toys. And I did, I, I bought one of those Happy Meals. What you get is a cardboard box. Inside the cardboard box, a metal tin container. Inside of the metal tin container, a puzzle consisting of six puzzle pieces. Now this is going to take even the densest of five-year-olds less than two minutes to complete. There's not a lot of fun to be had with this toy. And yes, as a former dense five-year-old, I did call it a metal tin container, but I refuse to correct that. Anyway, after the Happy Meal, nothing again until this weird NHL announcement and this trailer I couldn't wait to show you. Here it is. It's, it's Bugs Bunny never passing and just missing his shots. And the music makes it sound like he's winning. If you're making a trailer for a hockey video game, you want six saves. You want six shots. You want that classic tic-tac-toe action. Tic-tac-toe. What they're presenting here is clearly shit. That promotional clip is so poorly constructed that I have to wonder. Is it intentional? Are they, is all of this bad on purpose? 
when indifference is your greatest enemy, is the multiverse's marketing willfully frustrating just to evoke any kind of emotion? Consider, if you will, Hero Wars advertisements. Now, I'm not sure you know what these are. I see them on YouTube when you're watching a video and it's one of those skippable ads where YouTube just says, watch 15 seconds. Give me 15 seconds, you then you can skip it afterward. Most of the time, okay, every time I'm presented with the opportunity to skip an ad, I have taken it, with the exception of Hero Wars ads. There's just something mesmerizing about them. Actually, I think there are four things that are mesmerizing about them. Number one, bizarre attention grabbers. There's always some weird thing where you think, what? This one starts with a big round butt that gets poked by a needle. And that's not a game element. It's not a part of what Hero Wars is. They just know they have less than one second to grab your attention. And frankly, they had me at frame one. Number two, simplicity. You can follow along immediately. You can glance at this and understand. I have a number. I click on smaller numbers, that number gets added to my sum. Even if you weren't trying to, you now understand how the game works. Number three, digivolving. I'm very simple in this way. Anytime a character becomes progressively cooler looking, I'm into it. It's my thing. You know, it's like Transformers, you know, going Super Saiyan. Anytime the Mighty Ducks get a new jersey before the last game, it works for me. In the Hero Wars ads, it's rapid evolution. This guy's having a great time. He's just screaming and he looks cooler and does more damage. It's unceasing character growth. And finally, and this is the biggest one, I think the true secret appeal to the Hero Wars ads is making mistakes. So we're in the sewers here. I see a plus 50 sword. Heck yeah, dude, pick that up. Wait, no. No! Okay, so this big guy has 500. Um, I see a times three chest. If we... Yeah, so if we, if we get times three, we can take him. Do it. Wait, 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 wait. Go back, go back. I think I saw Rapunzel. Okay, now this is the last part of the trailer. Simple choice here. 350 or 15. What do you think he picks? Yeah, he picks 350 and dies. What I love about it is that the appeal is to draw you into the game and then make so many bad decisions that you can't wait to play it for yourself. The entire goal of this advertisement is to make you say, give me the controller. And I wonder why more video game trailers aren't wrong on purpose. You definitely see some characters fail and die in some trailers, and I feel like that's to indicate that it's going to be a difficult kind of game. But it's not often you see a simple game played stupidly. Why would you want to present your game like that? Most trailers will just show the player being perfect. When I went to the Hero Wars website in search of screenshots or more trailers of the actual game itself, I was surprised to find that you just are taken into the actual game itself right there in your browser. Unfortunately, and probably obviously, it isn't anything like that numbers game presented in the commercial, but this part's familiar. And so I am, at this moment, praising advertising that is completely misleading as to what the game you would eventually play actually is. Uh, but I'm, I guess what I am actually saying is that I find it strangely entertaining. A Hero Wars advertisement is simply focused on generating curiosity. Now, think back to what Multiverses has been doing. Bizarre attention grabbers. Simplicity. Six. Puzzle pieces. Digivolving. So it looks better now. And making mistakes. We'll be pausing updates and taking the game offline. All I mean to suggest is that Multiverses advertising is so wrong that it's right. It's so stupid that it's smart. Now, can a fallen off 2022 free to play platform brawler thrive in the year 2024? Probably not, but I will be rooting for them. Go get them multiverses. You can, you can do it. 
And that's delayed input for this week. Thanks for watching. So talking about intentionally incorrect gameplay in trailers got me thinking about what I think is the absolute opposite example. So I still do this. I, I weekly, I go to the PlayStation store to see what's been added. And one of my simple pleasures is going to the arcade archives trailers. And what's great about them is that they're not trailers. There's no editing. It is just somebody playing an arcade game extremely well and they'll just play for like three minutes without making any mistakes so you're just you're just watching some arcade god slay some sort of video game you've never seen before and it's just like a satisfying thing to watch there was a really interesting one recently for a game called volfeed so you've seen you've seen games like this where the goal is to just safely draw boxes right i'm watching this one and i'm thinking okay what are you doing buddy do you get the rules of the game? I was actually wondering if they got a different person to record this one. And then you kind of notice the robot snake is shrinking. Why would I ever doubt the Arcade Archives trailer master? There is a plan here. And I know I've sort of set the expectation for the ends of these videos to be uproariously funny, but here... There's no punchline or anything. I really just wanted to show you a clip of someone dominating this game I've never heard of before. That snake keeps shrinking. There, there doesn't seem to be any arcade game this person can't play. Somehow Arcade Archives found the best possible person in the world to capture footage for their low-key trailers. And that's free entertainment on a weekly basis. I do recommend.